Hey, at, at the very worst, I've got 75 times I've got to hang out and talk to you. Oh, that's so. nice. I'm sorry that that's the worst, but <laughs> I'm thanks. Saying, that's nice. I'm not saying of. it is the worst. Part of that sentence was very nice, <laughs> and the end of that sentence hurt. All right. Because because I know what your life is from what you've told me. And the fact that the part that's spent with me for only two hours every week is the worst of that. No, I guess I'm just not using that phrase correctly. It's the worst, you said, right? I'm saying, no, at, at worst. <laughs> the worst thing I could do. There are not worse things I could do. Is that what you said? I Am don't I, know. <laughs> you're the worst on FXX, I think you said. And I was like, I watched it for three years and loved it, but I missed the fourth season, I said. Mm. And then you said, well, it's better than talking to you. Is that what happened? <laughs> Hey everyone ever, and welcome to 20th Century Popcast, the show where we try to understand the present while living in the past. My name is Tim Blevins, and I'm Bob Ka- oh, Fuck, I was going to do this whole thing. I was actually going to do, I had it written down. That's you got it written down? And I, <laughs> and you I was, couldn't do it? I got self-conscious. I was going to go back and forth and see how long I could do it before you said something. Well, let's do it. No, do it again. Try again. All right. Okay. The whole thing or just the part where I as say you As far as you can get. All right. I want to hear what you've written down. Well, okay. You know what's weird is I just wrote the idea down. I didn't actually write the lines down. I'm a liar. I don't believe that. I hope these there, shows with lies probably I every episode. I there are lines written. I, I believe you have cues and, and everything. Let's hear it. All right. <clears throat> Let me get my notes together. Pause. Hey, everyone. <laughs> now you're fucking it up. Oh, it's a very good pause. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it was good. I'm good at pausing. I'm not good at starting the show. I, I'm not going to do it. I'm not. Okay. I, just introduce you yourself. You have to do it. Hey, everyone ever, and welcome to 20th Century Popcast, the show where we try to understand the present while living in the past. My name is Tim Blevins, and I'm Bob Canning. And Tim, yes, Bob, what's this I hear about you being on another podcast? That's what I was going to do. This is what's in Embarrassing. It was just a setup to promote an appearance on another podcast. Well, which podcast were you on, Tim? Oh, well, um, it's going to be next week. Or actually, depending on when this goes up, it might be this week. Um, August 7th, 8th, and 9th. So it's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in August. I'm going to be on the Flash Gordon Minute. It's yeah. a podcast. Yeah, former hosts, former hosts, former guests of the show. <laughs> Their show's host, Brad uh, Mendenhall. Um, the, the show is produced by Jarf Hardeen, who's been on the show twice. And then there's another co-host named Eric. I'm going to mispronounce your name, Eric, because you never say it on the show. Eric Deutsch, D-E-U-T-C-T-S-C-H. This is a horrible start, but I'm going to keep going with it. Yes, they do a podcast where they're breaking down the 1980 movie Flash Gordon minute by minute. Every episode, they talk about one minute of it. They do. They put up three episodes a week, and I happen to be on minute 6970. And 71, and those uh, you can check those out by searching for Flash Gordon Minute. I would also backtrack and check out some other episodes if you're into that kind of thing. I, I, you know, I've never promoted myself before, and this is why. Also, I've, I've quite often opened the show, but that was bad. That was a bad start. It wasn't great, oh. but it wasn't terrible. Okay. Um, and I'm happy to know that these episodes are coming up because you have mentioned some things um, about it to me because um, you've already recorded these and, and um, I've, I've heard a little bit and I'm excited to hear it. I haven't actually listened to any of these um, minute by minute podcasts. I know there's quite oh, a no. few of them out there. Um, so I'm going to check They're it out. Fun. I mean, it's another way to talk about pop culture and stuff. I mean, it's kind of like the first one I ever listened to was the Star Wars Minute. They're going through all the Star Wars films. I think I first checked it out starting with uh, Attack of the Clones is what they were doing. And in every episode, it's, you know, if it's a movie you know or something you know very well, it's just another vantage point of sort of looking at it when you're taking one minute out of context, just watching. Well, they're doing it in the sequence of the film, but you're watching just that one minute and discussing just that one minute. And do I really need to explain this? Do we no, really no, need to that's... keep this part? You know what we should explain is what's this, this show. This show, what's important our show. About this episode. Why don't you do that? With Tim and Bob. Yes. 
<laughs> earlier performed by Tim. I'm here, actually. I know some people may be confused. I am actually here. Actually, they might think you're here twice because of my version yeah, that could and be. your version. No, it's um, it, it's great. You know, it's it, it makes sense that you're promoting yourself um, appearing on other podcasts because we are on our 75th episode and certainly we would be branching out into the podcast world at this point. So, okay. yay, I did, us. <laughs> All right. Why would that make sense? Uh, does that make sense? I'm not sure. No, your sentence makes sense, but the statement of if we're 75 episodes in, let's I talk about other I think it just means podcasts. we're doing something right. We're doing something right. We've hit the podcast community. We're, we're intermingling now, and uh, I hope our listeners uh, will share our podcast podcast with their friends and we'll continue to grow good note good happy note to make. 75th anniversary <laughs> and you can check us out at 20 but no we're not at the end of the show but uh that's true 75 episodes that's what that's what this is <clears throat> normally right. i feel a little more we've done 25 50 they were big it seemed like milestone episodes and i felt more celebratory with this one <laughs> This one is off to a. Uh, this one feels more like a third show, fourth show, maybe not the seventy fifth show. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a show I would necessarily subscribe to. I mean, I would because apparently, as I'm promoting this other show I'm on, I really dig hearing my own voice because I'm a vain fuck. Apparently, <laughs> well. when it comes to the audio, my audio. But yes, today's episode <laughs> seventy five episodes. And Bob, we like I just said, we've had two kind of celebratory episodes prior to this. What what makes one of our celebratory episodes special when we, when we talk kind of you know instead of going the normal route the normal the normal format of a single topic you know this yeah. week we're going to be talking flight and a navigator we're going to be talking <clears throat> kevin smith whatever what makes our anniversary measurement arbitrary as they are episodes uh, a little different from that well what we do on these episodes tim is a segment that we call pop five yes uh where we quiz each other on uh, five topics of pop culture based on the previous 25 episodes that uh, that we've had. Um, and it can be directly about whatever it was. It could be a little side avenue. It's like, oh, we mentioned this in that episode. Let's talk about this more. Name five of these things. And we time it, and it's terrifying. Right. And why is it terrifying? I think you just said, sort of. This yeah, is a because, little bit of a competition. Or because, something yeah, I don't game. know. We've never really kept score, although I'm sure you have at home. You've got the, the board that has our, our points. but um, Has my points, yes. <laughs> yeah, all of your points. Yes, it's, I, I'm always freaked out by these because I have no idea what you're going to ask. Uh, <laughs> we take turns. I've got my topics. You've got yours. I have no idea what they are. Um, and then I have to answer those things and kind of show that I know a little bit about pop culture, since that's what this whole podcast is about, in 30 seconds. And that's the part that I don't like, in 30 seconds. Yeah, it's, it's like a game. It's it's like yeah. a quick thinking game. Also, did you like my fake laugh there a moment ago? Not because I didn't find what you were saying entertaining, I did, but the laugh felt like a, ra a forced radio laugh. I didn't The kind it. of laugh you might put in at the end of a weather report or something. <laughs> oh, so yeah. I'm sorry about that. But yes, Pop Fives, <laughs> I, I, the, the, it, I find it interesting that they scare you. I do get Get that a little bit. And I like him because it forces us to kind of you know rely on what do we actually know instead of coming to the show with a series of notes and prep work so that we can pull out random facts and just sound like scholars on you know our topic of discussion <clears throat> willow or whatever it might be. This actually we're being put on the spot to really have our brain snap into action, really see what do we actually recall of this pop culture of our youth. So yeah, I enjoy it. Yeah, you uh, you, you would because you're very good at it. You you pull stuff out your hat in all of our episodes i am not good at it i my memory is not as good as yours i there are very specific things that i know quite a little bit of, uh, quite a lot about but um i don't you know my range isn't as as vast as yours yeah, you already said that do you not do you not recall i don't i did that is well, that something well, that we've discussed good, in the past this episode oh. moments ago have we started yes. We are just about ready to start episode one of 20th. No, we have. And I think we should jump into it. So yeah. listeners um, that, we, that, that we've held on to through this opening, I um, hope that makes sense. Uh, so, Bob, I'm going to start, I think. I'm going to jump into this a little bit. Okay. 
and and see maybe we'll get off to to maybe an easy-ish kind of start i, I just oh, mentioned his name a moment good. ago yeah Huey right Lewis. i think you like this well no not <laughs> not uh not that easy but um episode 55 which was maybe back in march or something a little while back 20 episodes ago uh-huh. uh we did an episode about kevin smith about yeah. the filmmaker uh kevin smith you remember that i do he's, he's right. the topic of one of my pop fives Oh, perhaps it's the it, same pop five. But perhaps I, this is the same pop five. I'm going to ask you here on this microphone with your headphones on you, um, similar to, to, to Kevin Smith, I want to know five directors from the 80s or 90s who have appeared as a character in their own movie. Oh, my goodness. Can you do in their In their own movie. Yes. <laughs> That's Go. me. Okay. Uh, Spike Lee. That, yeah, that's one. Um, Jim Jarmusch? Is he a director? He um, is. Is he an actor? I don't know. Was he in a movie of his own? I mean, what makes a good answer is when you can stand behind it. Yeah, I can't stand behind that. That's um, maybe two, possibly one. I don't know. Nine seconds. Ah, that's true. Spike Lee. Sure, he was in two movies. He was in like four. There you go. That's the whole the whole thing. Are you hearing oh. that beep? That's awful. I didn't hear a beep. Oh, okay. It's just on my headphones. Ooh, so yeah, sorry. Spike Lee. Uh, I know he's in. She's got to have it. Is he also in? Um, uh, Do the right thing. Mo better blues. Probably two more. Pro- well, that that would be good. But he only counts as one person. Um, I had a couple when I you know whenever I try I come up with these I try to do it myself to see what sure. I can come up with. Uh, an obvious one would be Woody Allen. Mm. You know, thinking in the 80s, he's in Hannah Woody and the Sisters. Of course. Um, he's in uh, Stardust Memories, which I do still like. Um, I know he's not the most comfortable name to think about, but, you know, he's basically playing himself in the movies he directs. Uh, Billy Crystal uh, directed Mr. Saturday Night. Have That's seen that? right. I, I like that movie. I actually do like that movie. I've soured on Billy Crystal. He directed but Forget Paris, too, didn't he? He did. He's in I that like as Forget well. I like Forget Paris. Or at least I did. I, I haven't seen it in a while. Dan Aykroyd directed Nothing But Trouble, which he's in twice. Mm. And uh, Bill Murray has directed one movie. And I mention this because it's all over your Facebook recently for some reason. He, with a, another director who directed him later on in Larger Than Life named Howard Franklin, uh, the two of them directed Quick Change. He co-directed Quick Change? How do I not he, know that? I've, I've actually never seen that. I know it came out in 1990. I know oh, my brother loved it. Oh, you got to see Quick it. Change. You got to see the credits to see who directed Apparently, it. Apparently, I, I ignore those. So, are you aware of it when the director is acting in their own movie? Does it stick out to you? Um, yes. How so? Um, well, actually, I'm gonna uh, uh, revise that response. Really? Because yes was the better answer. I feel. Well, like. no, because clearly I don't <laughs> necessarily know. That, that answer person for conversation, is, perhaps? That, well, I just don't know that they've directed it. I didn't have any of those answers. Uh, Spike Lee is like the, the one that came out first in my head because he's probably the first one I realized uh, was the director and an actor. Um, I didn't really realize – I wasn't aware of Woody Allen in, until after I got aware of Spike Lee. Uh, and then movies like, like Billy Crystal's movies – to me, like it doesn't matter who directed it. It's because he's such a big role there. Like, yeah, no, it doesn't. I don't know that it matters so much to me. Is Spike Lee a good actor when you think of that? When you think um, of him in the movie, because he was the one you came up with, so he's maybe the one to talk about. Like, is he? I think he doesn't act in other people's movies. All these other names that I mentioned do act in other people's movies. I don't think Spike Lee has been in anyone other than his own movies yeah, as an actor. True. I think he's decent enough. I mean, I haven't seen all of his films, but the ones I've seen, um, I think he was fine enough. Is it a vanity for an actor to want to direct themselves or put the, or for a director to want to put themselves in a movie? Those are two different thoughts, I guess. But like when I'm yeah. thinking of like Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Billy Crystal, since they started as, well, comedians and performers, I think of each of them as kind of – you know, it's it is what they call a vanity project. They're trying something out. Like again, I like Mr. Saturday Night, but I always it. have this image of Billy Crystal being intolerable because now he's like, sure. look at me, I'm a, I'm a. What do you call it when you're good at all all aspects? I guess it the, depends on 
on on your opinion of the final product because if it's not that great then you might think of it as a vanity project <clears throat> but if it's really something that that connects with you then i think of it more of a of a passion project mm-hmm. like it's really something that they wanted to make they wanted to produce it direct it act in it because they really wanted it to to get done they really had a belief in it that's, but is that's there a feeling that they're, they're actors? Why are they directing? Is that in there somewhere? <clears throat> like they get the ability to, like Bill Murray gets to direct that movie or Billy Crystal gets to direct a movie because they've proven themselves at the box office. Spike Lee directed a movie when Woody Allen first was directing movies. That was what, the, well, Woody Allen might be similar to them. Spike Lee started as a director. So he had to fight to get his movie made. He didn't have the celebrity clout right. to be a director. Well, I think his first movie, Spike Lee's first movie, was a student film or a really straight out of college film. So it wasn't about fighting to be a director. He just made it himself. Mm-hmm. And he's uh, in it. Similar to Kevin it. Smith, which started this, he's in Clerks. Kevin yeah. Smith wanted to be Randall, opted out of casting himself as Randall, and then instead plays Silent Bob, and probably the better choice. It's Yeah, and it's a, his passion project. Uh, he wrote it. He directed it. And, and he wanted to be in it as a lead um, and opted out because he knew better. He thought better of it. Uh, I would have to say, I mean, we know Woody Allen writes all of his and Spike Lee writes most of his. Um, I'd have to go back and see if I think Billy Crystal wrote both of the ones he directed. So I think I mean, that's... I think he co-wrote them. I think he's working with uh, other writers, probably yeah. the writers of City so, Slickers. So I actually. see that more of a passion thing than a vanity thing. Doesn't always work because, you know... Um, you don't have any other opinions. It's just all you. And so sometimes it doesn't work, but do you want me to, to, uh, give you, uh, my overlapping pop five that also references our, uh, what was it? It is your choice. I would almost say pick something else, but if you're very happy with it, go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. I, I'll, I'll go with something else. We'll move away from that episode. Um, this one might be silly and fun. Uh, so let me, let me do this pop five. Uh, this is based on episode 70. The, which I was not a part of. That was your, oh, your episode yeah, the month with Chris, of June. Chris Nassini, <laughs> where you guys talked about Star Wars toys. Yes. I and uh, that. Uh, great episode. If, if our listeners haven't heard it, they should check it out at 20podcast.com. They can find it there. Um, but here's my pop five. Let me get the sure. timer ready. I would like you in 30 seconds to name five Ewoks. Okay. Go. Wicket, Paplu, Lumat, Chief Chirpa, and Logray. There you go. Seven seconds that took. Six, really. It just took me one extra second to hit stop. That's a phenomena. Uh, I mean, that's a toy-based phenomena. None of those none of those names are mentioned in the movie. The word Ewok isn't even mentioned in the movie, but boy, did I know all of that. Yeah, I know, and, and that's kind of why I wanted to ask the question. Because when you guys were talking and throwing out these character names of, of again, like you're saying, characters that aren't named in the movie, I never got that into Star Wars where I would know these these names. Paplu. Paplu, for crying out loud. Do you know what Paplu looks like? Or is it just a I name? I do. He's the one who rides the speeder bike. See? I don't know this. So, I mean, I have a fan could correct me if I'm wrong. Well, I mean, are there other things you're engaged in? Like, that's knowing the expanded world. It is odd to me. It's more odd to me because that's one of the things I love. I'm actually a huge fan of just watching a Transformers episode, a Star Wars movie, um, a G.I. Joe episode, and just naming the characters, rattling off the names of these things to myself or more so to someone who is not interested <laughs> there with me. And that's And that's a weird venue for reliving childhood because yeah these aren't you know i guess with the toys those are the names but yeah something in the star wars movies everything gets a name a lot of it after the fact you know like a character like walrus man from the original star wars is now called panda baba that's a name that came afterwards it's not like that was in the script and that was the name of it that just came later when people are naming things and a lot of the names are just play you know stupid plays on word are they are they named because they have to put a name on the toy are they named because somebody had to write the novelization i think it's it's just well the toy originally a toy was called walrus man that was the toy with the orange body the blue 
arms and, and, and the walrus-like face that kind of but doesn't exactly look like the character in the movie. And that's what he was called, and that's why I knew him growing up. Then they do a series of short stories set in Moss Eisley, and that's where I first read the word. I think it's just... As these things, and this is, again, the this is, I think, an 80s, 90s collector mentality. I think it feeds into the 90s with like stuff like Pokemon and things like that, where you're physically collecting something. If you're collecting something, you have to be able to designate what it is. If you have a shelf of Star Wars figures, you got to be able to say, well, who's who? And I think and as the world Walrus develops... Man isn't enough. Well, it was as a child. That's the thing. Like, it was when I was playing with it, it was. But yeah, I think as time goes on... A way to experience fandom, you know, I think we want to experience it every way we can. So if you see the movie enough times, you start to look for other things in the movie. Like, you know, like if you watch Star Wars multiple times as a kid, maybe sometime you watch it with the sound off. Or maybe sometime you watch it just paying attention to how the stormtroopers move. You find other ways to experience it. Mm. Likewise, when these authors come on to write the books, they got to write other stories. So maybe they're writing a story about Luke, or maybe they're writing a story about Leia or C-3PO, or, or maybe they're saying, well, who Who's in the background? Here are these two twin sister looking characters at the cantina. What's their story? And because the rest of the universe has been exhausted for the main characters, you start inventing little stories for these people because you just want to get deeper into it or you just want to experience it more because you're so in love with it. You want to leave your own little mark. So everything gets a name. And everything gets an identity. And there's something fun about that because they always call it like expanded universe. You know, like it's it's more outside of the movies. You have these books and these source books and these toys. But all of that feeds into something. And it's like learning a language. It's just another way of talking about it. It is odd because I love it. You know, that is one of my one of the reasons I go back and watch any of these things that have multiple characters I enjoy. You know, I assume it's what kids felt watching Infinity War. It's like you can point out who all these people are. Yeah, I totally get that. And I guess what what shocked me, not shocked me, but I guess what I really enjoyed hearing when you guys were talking about it is that you're in your 40s and and you still have that recall of these things. Um, Because like right now, my kids... Mentally, sure. (laughs) Sure, still sharp with that. But I know what you're saying. Don't know my my zip code, but I can tell you that. Uh, my kids are, are are into multiple pop culture things, and you can probably hear them in the background right now. Um, and they can recall names and characters and, and side people. I mean, I know I've mentioned this show before, uh, The Odd Squad. Mm-hmm. They have built just this Simpsons-like expanse of a universe, and my kids know all these little former odd squad agents, current odd squad agents, you know, uh, German odd squad agents, they know them. I don't know that they're going to know them. And, you know, they might know something else, but they're not going to know them when they're 40. They're not going to recall the odd squad. Why do you say that? What are you basing that I don't know. On? Maybe they will. Maybe that. Maybe this will be their Star Wars. Maybe like they Like you, not not to go this route necessarily, but you, you follow football. Sure. Like, can you name lineups of football teams from your youth? Like, do you remember watching a game in 1998? Can you name who was on the I state can, sport team? I can name some. I can name the more famous ones. I can name a couple less famous ones from my local favorite teams, you know, uh, growing up. Does that um, hit so, you at all? Isn't there a little bit of a, of a, of a push or a bump from, from experiencing that or no? No, I guess there is. I guess there is. Especially, like, if I were talking to somebody, um, and this happened – pretty recently where I was talking to somebody from upstate New York and we were talking about uh, the 90s Buffalo Bills. So yeah, that's, uh, I guess that's, that's similar. Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, and there was a time, look, there was a, I'm not going to be above this. There was a time when it was showing off, you know, in the 90s to be a fan of Star Wars, you know, you would just, since everybody was a fan of the movies and knew these characters, you would find ways to rattle stuff off. You would tell them, the five you walk, she, you know, you would correct their pronunci- pronunciation of at at by saying actually it's at at. You would do all these dumb little <laughs> things to exert your dominance over what they know. Sure, and I did that. I've done that with comic books. I've done that with Star Wars. But you know, I think I've and you know maybe I still do a little bit. But it is now more than then. Now there is a comfort, a joy, some sort of. The, 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 at the heart of what nostalgia is and just saying these things out loud. And I don't know exactly why. I like telling people what they're called. I'm sure it's a little showy, a little show offy to be like, and I, and I know what they're called. But also, I just find joy in that I haven't lost that knowledge. 
and that those words can mean something. Optimus, Prime, together as a, as a name, means something to me. When it's really just two random words put together, Grimlock, you know, RC, all these transformer names, but they mean something. Sure. Just saying it helps spark the memories that are important. And I'm not, you know, I'm not, I don't do it with Warner Brothers characters. I don't do it with Disney characters, but I do it with these things that meant something to me in the 80s, you know. I, that's why I love one of the things, one of the many things I love about the Marvel movies is finding the people in the background and being able to point them out and doing that and pointing them out to someone. I also can't do that, but that wasn't but my thing. But do you want to, I guess? Is that something you want <laughs> well, no, to do? no, because it wasn't my thing. So, yeah. Well, very good. I, I, I knew you would be able to rattle those off. Well, I was I enjoyed rattling them off at least. Good. Um, but I guess that's my thing. Let's let's talk something that might be your <clears throat> thing. That's a horrible segue. That yeah. didn't work out. No, it's perfect. Um, a little while back in episode sixty four, we talked about a long running sitcom that both of us watched. I think of you. I think you watch a lot of sitcoms. Um, we had an episode about Seinfeld. You remember we were talking about the the nineties sitcom Seinfeld, yeah. starring. Uh, I don't remember the star, but you know there there was uh, there was also like Julia Louis Dreyfus, the guy from the Doritos commercials. They were all on it, yeah. And big sitcom, we all watched it. I wanted to ask you right here, right now, to name five sitcoms from the eighties or nineties where a stand-up comedian played one of the leads. All right, go go. Uh, Roseanne, Home Improvement. Uh, I believe Norm Macdonald has a, had a show called Norm in the late 90s. Grace Under Fire. Um, Everybody Loves Raymond. Oh, that, did that it. five? That was, yeah, and that was with me having trouble with the stopwatch. So good job. Ah, and you success. picked And you didn't pick, you picked a, you started by picking, I think, ones where it's the, the person's name in the title, but you picked Grace Under Fire and you picked Norm. Are any of those ensemble shows? Any sitcoms that were like kind of it's more of an ensemble and the comedian's one of the characters? Like Seinfeld's an ensemble show, I guess. Uh, yeah, I think they're all ensemble shows. Really? Wouldn't I you guess say? I, would, I mean, yeah. I mean, Grace Under tricky. Fire, Roseanne, Home Improvement, they're all family shows. So yeah. your ensemble are the, the spouses and the children and But were neighbors. you interested in any of their storylines? Like when I think of Roseanne, I, I think uh, sadly, grossly, unfortunately, about her because her name's in it. That's sure. like a drawback of a lot of comedian shows is when their name is in it, it's hard to separate that. But Grace, I never watched Grace Under Fire. No, I, I, I know I. roughly what it's about. Okay. I, I like basically I thought it was like another Roseanne. Mm hmm. But, but what else did you say? What What did you watch of the ones that you said? Home Improvement, something uh, you watched. Yeah, I watched Home Improvement. But were um, you interested in any of the characters? And I, I say any of them because the main character is an awful character, but that seems to be what people tuned in for. Like, if it was an episode where the main storyline is about his oldest son, or it's about, I can't I, think of his I wife's name. I think I name. did at that age. Yeah, I think I did. I mean, I related to the kids because I was a kid. Um, so, yeah, that... I didn't see it as, and I probably didn't even realize it was a stand-up comedian show until after the fact. Oh, um, so you came to these shows not knowing? Yeah, those the early ones for sure. I I I went to Norm if it is called Norm uh, because Did it's you Norm watch McDonald. Norm? Yeah, where oh, he was like not a, because you thought it was a cheer spinoff. There was I think he there was one where he was like a sports writer or something. Um, it didn't have a lot of episodes, unfortunately, but I remembered enjoying it. I haven't gone back to it since the first run of it. And I think it was 99. It might be 2000s. So I apologize if, if I failed that yeah, one. Yeah, I'm trying to think when he left Saturday Night Live because it would have been right after that. I don't know when that was. Yeah. I was trying to think of shows <clears throat> where the, the, the comedian may not be the main character or isn't the sole character, like mm. the, the, the central one. Because, again, the ones you mentioned, that is who I think. Like I came up with like Welcome Back, Cotter. Which I know is a 70s show, but that was based around the comedian sure. Gabe Kaplan. But I feel like the students all kind of took precedent over him. Yeah. My favorite show of all time, Anything But Love. I mean, that's Richard Lewis and Jamie Lee Curtis kind of share that show. And I think it's almost more Jamie Lee Curtis's show than his show. But I love that he was there. Uh, My Two Dads kind of had Paul Reiser and another true. actor on it. And then uh, These Friends of Mine. 
the Ellen DeGeneres show that we were actually discussing, I think, before the show, that start, that's an example where that started, I think, as being basically friends. It was supposed to be about the ensemble. Right. But it morphed into being her show and kind yeah. of her taking over. I mean, like a lot of these shows based on stand-up comedians are also based on their act. You're getting right. some of their act, at least right. in the earlier seasons of the show. And I think maybe that's why something like Anything But Love, which if there are any listeners who know that show, please write in. I would love to do an episode about that show, but I don't know if anybody cares about that show. But that's not a show that was based Wait, around. Do we really need the audience to say that they want us to talk about Anything But Love? You are the the host, the creator of this podcast. You can talk we about We are the anything. hosts. There, we're, we're both hosts. We are the co-hosts, you are the creator, and you can talk about anything but love if you want to. Well, <clears throat> maybe I'll do it now, get it out of the way. <laughs> but I mean, that was a show that was more, again, it's more Jamie Lee Curtis' show. Richard Lewis is on it, but he was, and he was playing a version, I guess, of his stand-up. But it, it wasn't necessarily that here's a show built off his act. Right. He had a similar delivery. And I'm sure that, that there were some ad libs or stuff that could have been right out of his act. But there, the, he was playing a character that wasn't him, wasn't a comedian, wasn't named Richard. And I guess, you know, that's more intriguing to me than something like Seinfeld. Than something like, and I, even though I enjoyed the show, like Mark Maron's show, Maron, I enjoyed watching it. And it was fun, but I'm more, I would be more intrigued like I am now in watching him play a character like he's doing on Glow. Watching these people step out of maybe the safety zone of, you know, the, of the, of the guaranteed character that, and again, it's what brings me in. It's like, I know this comedian, I'm going to watch this, Yeah, but you know, I like the ensemble and it's hard. I don't know. Like, do you, can you, the night in the nineties, were there a lot of ensemble shows where say the main where the big name comedian is part of an ensemble and not necessarily the star? Like, I feel like home improvement, it's still Tim Allen's show. True. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's hard to it's hard not to see the shows as ensembles because it's not like it's a one man show and different characters come in every week. It's always the same character, so it's it's hard for me to separate ensemble from from the star. Yes, it's built around his comedy and his his routines. You're calling it comedy, <laughs> but but um, could you conceivably do an episode? We're talking about Home Improvement, right? Yeah. So yeah, could you do an episode where Tim Allen isn't on it? Yes. Did they? I don't know. And and you would be you would be fine watching that? I would have, yes. Yeah, you're not fine watching Home Improvement now, right? right. That show is abysmal. <laughs> right. And he's a horrible man. <laughs> but yes, I would have been fine seeing something that was just about the kids, just about the wife, just about Al. Sure. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you want to watch an Al centric episode? At that time, I would have been fine with it. Okay. Because once the world is built, you know, you can do whatever. You don't need if it's built. Tim the tool that's man. the thing. Is that a is that I just you're saying it is, I guess. I don't see that as a world I'd want to go to. <laughs> and you know, I don't I don't yeah. want to step into the what's it, the to, what's Tim's last name on home improvement? Uh Taylor. I don't want to step into the Taylor house and have the mom take the kids to the doctor. And that's our episode. I don't want to step into the Taylor house, period. So this is a, <laughs> sure. a rough example. But like I'm thinking, these are all modern examples. I'm sorry, but I'm thinking of something like Brooklyn Nine-Nine, The Office, Parks and Recreations. You know, all of these are shows that were built kind of around, well, Parks and Recreation, I think, was built around Amy Poehler. Um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine was built around Andy Sandberg. I don't know if The Office was necessarily built around Steve Carell, but he was the name that people saw. But those shows can work with and without the actor being there because they are genuine ensembles where the aspect of the recognizable comedian disappears into the character. I don't think the Leslie Nope character on Parks and Recreation is who Amy Poehler is. All these 90s sitcoms, I feel like they're playing versions of themselves, even on Anything But Love. Richard Lewis is playing a version of himself. Again, he's a he's a magazine writer. He's a, he's a, he's more suave and, a, and more of a of, of of a confident you know like social ladies man or whatever than than he comes across at his act. Sure. And he's not smoking meth, but I think there's still aspects that are there. I guess yeah, I don't know. I, I it's hard for me to th to to think of these shows as anything but it's this person doing an act. Like, was there ever a very special episode of Home Improvement where Tim the Tail Toolman? Dick, what's his name? <laughs> Taylor, where he like got serious 
had to give a serious speech. Uh, probably. Are you not the the go to guide for am, this program? Are you I am not, not the source in this neighborhood. You are not. I am not. I watched the show as a child, and then that was it. So no, I'm not. I'm sure there were moments. Yeah, there was episodes. I think where one of the kids was caught smoking or something. So I'm sure he had to say something serious. I'm sure he cut it with humor. I mean, what, do you what think you of asking? him as a good actor on that show? Uh, I I. Guess I do for what it was. I mean, you're gonna love Santa Claus too. (laughs) You know, I mean, he is not. You know, I wouldn't consider him a thespian, but Mm -hmm. he's he's a fine comedic actor. I feel like it ties a little bit into uh, like the Billy Crystal directing, Dan Aykroyd directing, the the the, 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 the putting themselves like when it is their piece. Like these shows built around comedians, like Roseanne was apparently a nightmare to work on. Grace Under Fire was apparently a nightmare to work on. These comedians are not part of an ensemble if they're the head of the show. True. Where, where something like Anything But Love, from what I understand, it was an ensemble show and a lot of the plots didn't, you know, they were yeah. more about Jamie Lee Curtis or someone else. And that works. But and I feel like that like, was a. It sounds like the difference there, too, is that, like you're saying, um, Richard Lewis was hired for a show that probably somebody wrote. Like he didn't create the show, right? No. Yeah. So, so he was hired like as Wendy Cout, I believe is her name. K O U T. Yeah. So he came in as an actor to play a role. Um, whereas, like you're pointing out, all the other shows are centered around and based on these particular guys. So they're brought in. They're clearly the star of the show. Um, and so, yeah, I can see how that's could be problematic for production isn't it odd that something like home improvement would be a passion project for somebody (laughs) that they did have an opinion on well this doesn't work this does work (laughs) i don't know if it was a passion project and and just a way of uh, hiring a guy that was already mildly successful to uh, make more money for a network oh is that what you think it was is that is that to uh too negative of a no no i'm just i it's it's odd to me when i think about and again i don't know grace under fire or, or roseanne but i understand they dealt with social issues i just it's odd to me yeah well i mean Home I improvement don't... is odd to me more <laughs> so than my two dads which should be the outlier here but i loved that show yeah i don't know the history of what of all the shows and i'm ever you don't know the history of what i'm saying is i was gonna say like my mother the car i'm saying i married dora i'm segueing to the Um, fact that and jillian um, slept here whatever that show was called seinfeld was written by seinfeld and and tried he was it's his project he's trying to sell it uh i think the same can be said for everybody loves raymond that was his project uh um with phil rosenthal and they try and sell it whereas i think a Grace Under Fire and 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 Tim the Tool Man, I would feel more. <laughs> I think it's called Home Improvement. Su- still, I would. I would. But be, I could be wrong. I would not be surprised if we learned that the network approached them, saying, "Hey, let's build something around you." You know, I, I see a difference there. There's there's definitely a difference there. No, and I think that was the '90s thing. You grab us. I think because of Seinfeld, and I think it was happening in the '70s though too. Sanford and Son was built around Red Fox. Chico and the Man, which made my list, by the way, although I've never watched an episode, <laughs> uh, featured Freddie Prince. I mean, you had shows that were built around comedians, and the ones that yeah. lasted lasted. I mean, it's something you can do, and I guess the shows build ensembles and hopefully they grow beyond just a person i guess i just don't like home improvement yeah and that's, that's why i'm harping on that really getting to here that's your do you have a home improvement to be top made. five to move to yeah are you still there i'm still here can you hear me i couldn't for a moment oh were you saying anything i was i was saying that you were making your um annual point of not liking <laughs> home improvement <laughs> Is it annual or is it monthly? It's probably monthly. All right. It's quarterly. Well, it's our 75th, so it's probably quarterly. <laughs> That's 75 episodes of not caring for <laughs> home improvement. It's horrible. Yeah. But what do you have? What, let's let's move on. Um, yeah, this one, this one, you might not like me asking this, but um, 
it's going to bring up a, a topic that I kind of wanted to discuss with you. Um, so get ready. I'm going to start the timer. I don't know five home improvement characters. <laughs> Can you please name the five? Oh, uh, this is based on, <laughs> I need to say this. This is based on uh, our 65th episode, mm-hmm. which if which you was. know, was our radio head. Uh, <clears throat> the Benz yeah. listen through. And that was a yeah. nice groan. So. Well, it's kind of like the home improvement of <laughs> compact discs. <laughs> so this is a great, great uh, next question then. Uh, are you ready? I'm going to get the timer I'm going. I'm ready. I hope it's not about Radiohead. Name the five members of Radiohead. Go. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, well, well, there's Tom York. Uh-huh. There's Brad Scotch Tape Dispenser. <laughs> There's 15 seconds. Um, Eddie Cochran Jr. Oh, that was actually close. There's Goo Goo Dolls. <laughs> and there's, uh, uh, what was the neighbor's name who didn't have a mouth? Wilson. <laughs> 30 seconds. Ah, uh, I don't think I've ever known the members of Radiohead. Who are they? Uh, you've got Tom York. That's correct. Oh, what a shock. Good you, for me. You said Eddie somebody, but there is an Ed in the band, Ed O'Brien. Not the same Ed who's saying life is a highway. No. That's um, Eddie Cochran Jr. I think, I think some of these names you'll recognize. Johnny Greenwood. Nope. Colin Greenwood. Unfamiliar. Are they related? I believe they are. Okay, that's lucky. Uh, and uh, Phil Selway on drums. Phil what? Philip Selway. Yeah, I don't know this band. Do people normally? Do people outside of the, the deep cut fans of Radiohead know these other people? Do they have their own solo project? Well, this is what I was thinking about. Uh, yes, some of them do. I think Phil Selway does some stuff. I think one you of the think Greenwoods. Phil Selway does some stuff. One of the Greenwoods. I'm sure he does. Does but some what? Um, soundtracks, some some. Music, oh, really? film music, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, they all do their own thing. But that was my thing. Like, there are, you're going to be a fan of, of a band and you're going to know all, all the band members' names. Sure. I, I consider myself a pretty big Radiohead fan, especially um, back in the 90s and early 2000s. Did you know all of their names? I did. I don't have them on recall, no. You don't? I did reckon, you ever? I have Tom York, Johnny Greenwood uh, was always at the top of my head, but the others... Um, I never really had them on recall. Um, but does that matter? Because I was talking to some other people about some bands I like. And uh, a specific one came up, Guster. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm not sure if you're a fan of Guster, but I really like Guster. I have. I think all... I know their name and I think they have a, a fly or something on the cover of one of their albums. That's, that's correct. That's correct. And they're, they're a Boston area band. And so I've got all the Guster albums. I can't name one band member in Guster. Mm-hmm. Does that this make ties me into the toy question you're asking? Less Does that make fan? you what? Does that make me uh, less of a fan? Should I not say I'm a fan of Guster if I can't name the lead singer of Guster? Well, what are you a fan of, though? Well, you're a fan of their music, I'm right? I'm a fan of their music, right. Yeah, I don't know. I guess that's tricky because it's wording. You like their music. I wouldn't peg you as the world's biggest Guster fan. Actually, I would because I don't know any others. <laughs> and you're 17 feet tall. But, I, I I mean, they're not your favorite band. No, that's true. I guess, true. yeah. What, what I you're do asking, know the is names of, of my favorite bands. That's true. Although I couldn't mm-hmm. tell you everyone at the top of my head right now in Huey Lewis and the News. I don't know all the news. See, that's kind of – that's is that you or is that a, the band? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know. I only know their names because I wrote them out in the show notes for that episode. <laughs> Johnny <laughs> Cola. I, yeah, I would have to look them up. Well, and it's interesting that you're using music over toys because music, I think, is where – maybe comic books do this too. But music is where snobbery and fandom is biggest, I think. Music? Because there's something hip and cool about music. I think as comic books and stuff gets a little more acceptable, but that's where people want to drop all the names, mm. want to correct you, want to let you know who the producers are and which track and which version and mono, stereo, Velvet Underground, blah, blah, blah. Wow. But um, I don't know. Like, are you, do you talk to people about Guster? I, well, that's you said what, you did. You that's just why said, this came yeah. up. Yeah, that's why I thought of this. And did the other person, were they able to name the band? Um, well, we weren't really talking about that, so uh, they might have been able to, um, but I don't know for sure. Um, I guess I wonder how does the people – that's one of those things where it's like 
going back to the TV shows we were just talking about or movies in general, like we always know the hit maker in the terms of we know the main actors of a movie. Maybe we know the director. We attribute lines in Ghostbusters to the actor, not even the character, when it might have been a screenwriter who wrote it. With the music, we know the front person, you know, and when it's a band, we know the lead singer and maybe we know the guitarist. But a lot of times, yeah, the rest of the band is kind of lost in the shuffle. And I guess what you're asking is, does that matter? And I, I kind of think it does. And how does that matter? What does it affect? Because I don't, well, I, what does it affect? It affects our perception of how these things exist. You know, when people mm. talk about the Beatles, they are actually normally, at least how I hear, talking about Lennon and McCarthy. <laughs> there's two other members of that band. Did you and there's also producers. Did you purposely mispronounce McCartney? Did I mispronounce? Yeah, you said McCarthy. More Curthy. <laughs> I not. Per- I guess I've been doing that for some time. <laughs> I mean, he's the, arguably the least noticed Beatle. And again, we should get out the Beatles, but but to talk about other bands, like like I, I and again, doesn't matter. But there's a mystification of the front person who leads the band. Sure, you know, Courtney Love in Hole, or um. See, I can't think of the names of anybody in Sleater Kinney because they're all kind of equal there, mm. or were until what's her name was on the on the on the on the, on the Portlandia. Right. But I think it does matter because I think if we're gonna if we're gonna claim to be fans of this, if we're gonna be like this matters to us and we're in depth and we want to respect the artist, I love to say I love Guster. Yeah, you probably should know who's in it. <sighs> I probably should. I, but I mean, I also, I can't tell you who's in David Bowie's backing bands. Rick Ronson might be the name of one on Ziggy Stardust, but I can't actually tell you that. And I guess it matters because to know that might demystify <laughs> the lead singer a bit, but also because they did some of that work. Yeah, that's, I think I mean, uh, these greats are often forgotten. Like, it's sure. not just whoever's straddling up to the microphone performing that makes these songs what they are. Right. And they get shout outs. It's like, I'd like to introduce you to the band. You know, that part. <laughs> yeah. You know, on drums, I forgot his name. <laughs> Bass, I think we have two. I'm, I'm, I'm pretending I'm leading Primus. But I, um, I, I feel like that, that should matter. And you're right. I don't know why. Because take another step, I don't know every visual effects artist on a Star Wars movie. You mm-hmm. know, I, I know some of the designers' names, but not all of them who designed the artwork for Transformer cartoons. I did, but I forgot to now the name of the guy who wrote the songs for the Gem cartoon. Like these, you know, how much should we know? And that's a weird question, but I feel like I, th- I think with with a band, we kind of owe it to the band to know if we love it. And if, it, and if it's a consistent band setup, and if it's something we can figure out, yeah, we probably do owe it to that band. I got, other one. I got some work to do then. But I don't know, because it's like I'm thinking right now, like Liz Fair. I don't know her backing band. I don't but even see, know if it changes from album to album. But, but they're all playing on the album. But you're naming- How I know those songs. I keep cutting you off. Sorry. How I know those songs is from those albums. So I know what she's doing as well as what the other musicians are. But you're also you Liz Fair, Liz Fair, Liz Fair, Liz Fair. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, with with Liz Fair, David Bowie, you're naming artists that are, are basically solo artists. That yes, they've got backing bands, maybe that are okay, consistent. Echo and the Bunny Man, Bunny Man, The Cure, right? Um, better than Ezra. <laughs> Live. <laughs> Can you name any of the members of Live? Ed O'Brien, the newscaster. The author of RoboCop? I think Ed O'Brien actually is is the name of the, the lead singer. Of Liv? I think so. That's his I'm name, that Ed. Up. I'll, Ed I'll sings that those songs? right now. Ed <laughs> is fronting a band that meant something to four to five <laughs> people yesterday. Like literally yesterday, uh, four to five it's people. It's not O'Brien. Like, it is Ed, though. Really? That's not a very... Imagine if it was like Ed Jackson or Ed Bowie or, or or Ed Blondie. No, I. you're right. They're solo artists, so that's tricky. But it's like when I think of Guided by Voices, I can think of Robert Pollard. I can think of Tobin Sprout. And that's it. And there's other people who come and go in that band. They've all contributed. Right. 
and they're all there in the notes. And I guess it comes down to, well, what is it to be a fan of something? If we're going to consider ourselves, like you consider yourself a connoisseur of music, right? You're a fan of music. That's your I'm a, thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say those are two different things, though. I'm a fan of music. I don't believe I could be considered a connoisseur of music. Why not? Because I don't know the names of the band members. Okay, so that's literally why. <laughs> so in Loggins in Messina, you could be a connoisseur as long as it's an acoustic performance of Loggins and Messina. Sure. But then to bring up something like the Dance Hall Crashers, probably not so much. Because no. who was in that? Right. Also, who? <laughs> that's that's also a good question. I don't know. I mean, do you... I, I, I think you're humoring me. My guess is you don't think you need to know. You personally don't think. I, I think... I think that this has been enlightening. And I think that you can be a fan of the music... Um, but maybe not consider yourself a true fan of the band if you can't name the band members. But then that goes the other way. Can can you like a movie if you don't know who directed it? Can sure. you like a song if you don't know who sang it? Isn't is that actually more pure to not know the people who went into it, but to just know the art? I like don't know if, it if it's I don't know if it's more pure, but yeah, I mean you can do that with I mean if what's your experience like I don't know the names of paintings I'm looking right. at whenever I go to the Boston Museum of Fine Arts located in wonderful Huntington Avenue in Boston. Um I don't know the names of each of those painters and I can have an experience with that painting. Yeah. That touches me. But then the ones where it's a name I recognize or the exhibit I'm going to see because of the name, Gustav Clint, I'm there. That's di- that's a different experience. And that might be the one, as an adult, I remember now because it's a way of talking about it. I can say, oh, I went to the Clint exhibit. If I'm talking with someone, like, what did you see at the museum? Well, I saw the Rothke. Well, I saw the name of another artist. You know, I can do that where, as if I say, well, I saw the painting where they're on a river and there's a woman with a yellow hat. Like, what the fuck does that mean to an adult yeah. trying to talk about it? Oh, I like the song where there's like a guitar you know but the other side of it is as kids to go back to something like um um, music and stuff or, or cartoons as kids experiencing this as naive individuals first experiencing it that was how we heard it like pretty much any band in the 90s that i got into the first time i heard not everyone but a lot of them the first time i heard them i didn't know who they were right and I could love the song, and it was a pure form of that. That developed into getting names and getting the albums and being like, well, I'm a Guided by Voices fan. I'll get this. Archers of Loaf, I'll get this. Oh, were they in this other band? I'll get that. Like that, that does change your experience with it and how maybe even what it means. That's true. The bands that I do know the members of uh, certainly do mean more to me. Um, oh, and, they do? Uh, oh, sure. I mean, my favorite bands i know their history you know i know where they were discovered i know what year things were released um but that's a different especially that last example that's a different way of experiencing them because you're placing it in a time you're placing it in a place in a creation or whatever whereas when it's just a song when you're just hearing like the first time i ever heard ziggy stardust that song was probably 24 years after it came out. I had no context of when it came out. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I necessarily knew it was David Bowie who was singing it. I didn't know the album of it. It was just this song that overtook me. Then later on, I find out that it's from 1970. I actually just pulled out the CD. I can't read in this lighting. 1973, maybe? 71, 73? It's, it's David Bowie. It's the end of this phase of his career. Like I start putting all those other pieces in. That's when it becomes, oh, it's my favorite song, and here's the history of it. Oh, I love this album, here's the history of it. And that's a different experience. Watching a bunch of Ewoks ride a speeder bike or watching Pat Plu hop on a speeder bike are actually two different experiences. Yeah. Because one involves research, knowledge, memory. And the other one is just a pure, isn't it funny that bears holding onto a, a anti-gravitational stick <laughs> control device? And those are very different ways of experience in the pop culture. And I guess I, in talking about it, I'm just wondering, like, is one more sincere than the other? Is one more age appropriate than the other? And just because the, the, the knowing the band members is very showy. 
that's a showy way of knowing something, but maybe it's fun to talk. Fans love that minutia. Yeah, it's just a different level of fandom. You can have your your deep cuts and know so much about a movie or a band, a song even. Um, and then you can also truly enjoy a movie that you know very little about except for what it looked like and the plot and how it made you feel. But is that a fandom? That second example? Or is it this idea of fandom? Isn't it all-encompassing? Like I enjoyed watching <clears throat> two episodes of some program from the 90s. Like I saw two episodes of Briscoe County Jr. Does that make me a fan? Or is that just something I saw two episodes that were entertaining? And are those inherently different things mm. in different ways of interacting with the pop culture? Because a fan of Briscoe County Jr. is going to be talking about shit that I don't know, that I can't follow, and probably won't even want to talk to me because I'm like, yeah, I saw two episodes. They're fun. I don't care. I guess he has a hat. No, you know, that th- kind of thing. Yeah, no, I don't think that is a fan. I think that is just a passing um, enjoyment of of that show. A fan, I could be sitting next to the big fan, both watching him. could both have the same laugh reaction and enjoy it to the same heights. But because they know all these details, it's a different thing. Yeah. That's weird. That seems almost less about the art and more about the artist, less about the experience and more about the production or the overall experience. I mean, we're, you know, the nature of the show we're doing and talking about these things, we talk about these topics, not as just, we enjoyed it. Do you remember it? It was fun. Or this is the first time we talk about it in this analytical pulling from it. How does it relate to the world way, which distorts ultimately what it is. Does that, does that ruin it for you then? And talking about it, it, I don't know if it ruins it. it like to, it, to get this analytical? Well, I mean, I enjoy doing that, but I'm wondering what is that experience? Because we've had the experience where it's something we love, but maybe, or I think we've had the experience I have where it's like, I, I fucking love the Transformers cartoon. I can probably watch three in a row. I can't watch four episodes in a row anymore. I, I just, I just, it doesn't, it, it jazzes me and hits me right and, and gives me all these feelings and sensation for a couple episodes. But by that fourth one, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go do something else. And yet I fucking love that show. Yeah. I think I could watch all existing star Wars movies in a row right now. I'm not entirely positive. I think I could do it, but I, I just, I don't know. I, 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 I think there's some, something else is going on. And it's not about the art. And we're, when we're this analytical about it, it's, it's, it's selfish, maybe. You know, like the purest form of experiencing something is just sitting there and letting it wash over you, which is selfish because you is in there. But need, this need to analyze it, to know how it was made, to really be like, look at me, I get how Jim Henson is working that puppet and how he's talking, but you watch the puppet like, I get that. Suddenly I'm analytical and I'm missing out on the beauty of just, that's Kermit the Frog talking to Arsenio <laughs> Hall in the Arsenio Hall show and Jim Henson's right there. What the fuck? You know, I'm missing out on that a little because I have to be the fan. Sure. Like, it's showy, right? Knowing that all the names of the members of Radiohead, what does that get you other than the ability to say, you don't know the names of all the members of Radiohead? <laughs> True. And yet, all of those names made that made that band, made that music, right? They're all, would you say they're all equally involved? I in believe that they are. Is? Yeah. Really? They're uh, all equally involved? I don't know. Involved? If it's, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a percentage difference here and there, but I, I don't hey, that's think... That's not equal. I don't think there's one of them that shows up and gets the sheet music and then just plays it. I, <laughs> you know, I think... None of them are Ringo Starr. <laughs> so... Does that bother you? This, to have to think about it this way? Um, it, it doesn't bother me so much. No. But it it just makes me change my perspective on saying I'm a fan of a band um, or I'm a fan of this band's music. So those know? are two I, different things. I might, I might start saying it differently. Yeah, I think it might be a really? different... Really? So this is really... So the language is important. I think you. so. Because I don't want to keep saying I'm a fan of a band if I can't tell you who's in the band. And I... But I, that just started because of something I said. No, I mean, it's, well, it just started because of the thought I had uh, a few days ago. No, it's me. I did it. <laughs> you did it. Okay. Very selfish, Tim. So you're not a fan of Guster then? Uh, I'm a fan of their music. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> 
ultimately, because now it's this weird, now it's this other thing where you're trying to distance yourself from someone. Isn't this weird? It is, it is weird. But you can't just enjoy it. You have to be able to say you're something. And now you're second guessing that what you're saying. Because at the end of the day, if you stood up in a room and said, I'm a fan of Guster, and two people in that room went, no, he's not. <laughs> How does that impact you? Um, it doesn't really. How does the lingo it doesn't. impact? It doesn't. No. But this matters all of a sudden to you. Well, By the way, we're... it totally matters to me. I need to know that I'm a fan of yeah. things. But I don't get why. Yeah. Well, I mean, g- going back to Radiohead, another aspect of this is... That neither one of us are a fan of. I just want to be clear. <laughs> nobody likes Radiohead ever. Um, some other people were talking about seeing Radiohead recently. Ugh, and as sorry. much as I like Radiohead, I've never seen them live. And that would seem to be the thing you would have to do if you're a fan of the band. Of the I would music. disagree with that. Maybe you don't like crowds. No, no, no I know. Maybe I mean, it's just what another... Radiohead charges is a ridiculous reason to that, pay that's to see usually the band my you reason. enjoy. So. Or maybe they're like Bob Dylan and they're not really a live act. <laughs> <laughs> Who's ever come out of a Radiohead concert saying, wow, <laughs> I was just at a Radiohead concert? Nobody. Sometimes they'll say mom and whatever the rest of that is upside down. <laughs> So do you think that? Do you think if you've ne- – because you've never seen Oasis live, have you? I have. Oh, you have? Yeah. Just, oh. just once. I've seen Travis live like 14 times. Yeah. Well, nobody is asking about that. <laughs> I'm just – When was the last I, time somebody was like, hey, man, do you like Travis? <laughs> or tell me about Travis or my name is Travis. Like none of that. It's not a name people use because no. that band was like, really? Do you really like Travis? Are they still a thing? Uh, am they, I thinking of the right band or am I confusing them with someone else? I don't know because you haven't really described the band, but you probably are thinking of the band Travis. Well, who's the song? Who sings that song? Sing. Travis. Who sing, Who had the album with Billy Bragg? Uh, Wilco. That's who I'm thinking of. Travis, is, to me, has always been, well, Wilco's a little too much for me. <laughs> so I'll go with Travis. Are they a big deal? Is there a documentary about Travis? Did they do The Man Who, or was that Wilco? Uh, Travis did The Man Who, um, and they actually just had a documentary uh, entered into the Scottish Film Festival about them. I want you to know this. I have two Instagram videos that are also entered into the Scottish Film <laughs> Festival, which is the Vegas sounding festival you could come up with. Oh, the Scottish Film They're Festival Scottish for band. movies. I don't yes, know. but there's a name it's, it's, to the festival. Yeah, I can't imagine it's called right. it's the Scottish Film name. Festival it's... of the World <laughs> of Earth. Scottish Festivals of Earth. Um, you've seen Travis 14 times. So you must be their biggest fan. Uh, you know what? There's probably somebody that has seen them more than I have. Fifteen, and I'm times. counting. I don't know about that. Store I don't know about that. Yeah, no, you should. <laughs> you should also count them. Like if you ever saw them shopping, that might have to be in there. I interviewed them once, but we won't get into. Really? That. Yeah. For what? Uh, for IGN. In uh, person or you, over yeah? The phone? When I used to work there, they did a they did a appearance on a web series, and so the TV division of IGN was. Uh, interviewing them and our our friend uh, Eric Goldman was going to be interviewing them for the TV aspect of it. He said, hey, I know you're a fan of this band and I was doing some freelance for them. Do you want to come and interview them for like the music aspect of it? Because he didn't know them. And so, yeah, I got to meet them and interview them. How was that? It was pretty cool. It was it was rushed. It was one of those junket type things where there were a few other interviews. So like we only had like eight minutes or five minutes or something. Did um, you express to them that you were a fan? I did. I had, I had how many it, times just at the end, just as after we were done with the business, I said, Hey, before we go. And then I went into the, you know, the fandom, um, of, of Travis. Was their response 14 times? <laughs> No, but uh, our they, drummer, who's him a what thing him a bob they, hasn't been to. They thought it was pretty shows. sweet that my wife walked down the aisle to one of their songs. So oh, that's nice. Yeah. So you had to tell that. I did. Like that. that was that was like something my big that you know would be specific, and they could be they would be jerks to not acknowledge. I guess, yeah. Well, that's nice. Seventy-five. Seventy-five people. And of that seventy-five, you may not have like this one, but there's a nice back catalog, right? There's some oh, good there's episodes. Oh, there's some great ones. 
And you can find those. But you know what we should do some days is make a list of favorite episodes. <laughs> and all the people involved with bringing those episodes to you. People I'd like to thank right now, like Robert Canning. Or maybe Tim Blevins. Those are the only people really who work on the show, but you, the listeners, listen to the show. So if I had a list of your names, I'd read them off. If we had a Patreon page, I could read that off. We have neither. So I'm just going to say thank you for listening specifically today. But for the you know overall year and a half that we've been doing the show, um, I, I, I hope that we continue to do it. But 75 seemed like a nice number. It does seem like we got somewhere with this. And so, you know, I hope we keep uh, keep keep it our... On. And keep our ending short, I guess, yep. is what I hope. But uh, yeah, so check us out online, 20popcast.com. That's the main website. Everything you need is there. Normally, I plug us a lot here. I'm not going to this time. Short of saying, check out 20popcast.com for more information. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I think that was a great, this? great ending to this episode, Tim. I'm good. Now, was it a great, great episode prior to the ending? Much of it. Much of it was not. Much of it was really good. I'm a big fan of, of this episode. I don't know the names of the hosts, but um, I'm still, <laughs> uh, I still think it's pretty good. So you've listened to it, but you're not like, like I know it. <laughs> right. I've been to this episode. Exactly. And I could tell you a few things about which of the episodes rides a hover, <laughs> hover bike, speeder bike. I know it's called a speeder bike. I was trying to think of a longer way of referring to it. Swoop bikes is, is something I think that they're actually also uh-huh. called. That was a later edition, and then it's stuck in the prequel trilogy. Prequel trilogy. Oh, if people don't know, sorry. Not being very uh, clear there. I'm talking about Yentl. <laughs> You're gonna, you're uh, you're gonna be up too late. You're gonna lose your energy. Those Let's are two different it. things. All right, we're recording. We're recording. All right. <clears throat> you're ready. <laughs> I'm never ready for pop five, but yes. Man, you want that in the episode? You want that to be the segue? It's. I'm not it's, gonna promise that it is, no, but we recorded to 20 minutes already because oh. I'm gonna say it repeatedly as we get into this. Never ready for a pop five. How often does does this come up outside of the podcast? What have we done? When you're not podcasting, are you not ready for pop five? (laughs) Oh, man, I was just heading down the insert name of highway. And a pop five. Oh, I I dropped my kids off at school. But pop five, uh, they're not going to school today. No, it doesn't happen that way. But similar, similar queries of what's your favorite this? What's your what? Oh, have you seen any of these? And in 30 seconds. Uh, usually timed, yeah. Hey, are you have, have you seen, have you seen Infinity War? Go. Uh, uh, I have. Um, uh, the, uh, which one? Oh God, this is so. Mm, did I? When did it come out? It came out this summer. Okay, Holy crap! April. You just predicted every answer I'm going to give tonight. <laughs> All two answers. Uh, let's let's do it. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's do it. We're going to do it. They're going to do it. And it is this episode, this 75th episode. That is a real anniversary, right? People celebrate 75. Absolutely. It's okay. the corn anniversary. I, I don't know. It's not corn. That's four. It's not golden. That's 50, right? Golden corn. I don't know. I actually don't know any of these bullshit things. Silver you know what the, It's paper was the one. I'm like, well, who? What? Paper's paper. first, I think. I know. It's like, here's some plates. Paper plates. Um, Is that, or is it paper planes? What's the song by MIA? Sometimes I eat on paper plates. I know <laughs> that's, that's not it, but I thought I could do it better than that. I couldn't. <laughs> Sometimes I that God. What if I had an album? <laughs> what if much like Megan Trainer I released an album but it was just that? Or just uh, you know, just or covers of other songs like that. Last Saturday night. I don't even know the words to that one, so good luck figuring that Katy Perry song out. Sorry. You've got the touch. You've got the power. We don't have to pay rights on any of these because you can't quite tell if it's the hit or if I'm just talking. Yeah. That's in the song, The Touch, as well. Yeah. 
<laughs> I listened to that song four times in a row yesterday and dare. I kept rewinding it after the keyboard solo, but to the start of the song. And it got me thinking, just like I'm thinking now as we record, my windows are open and we're very close to the neighbors. Are they hearing this? <laughs> are they over there thinking, yeah, or are they thinking no to every time the touch and dare and the theme from Howard the Duck started over because I was going through my iTunes looking for stuff I didn't have on CD and I don't have Howard the Duck on CD. Interesting. I have it on DVD and Blu-ray for some reason, but I don't have it on CD. Let's talk about that some more. No, let's, we'll do this. Let's do it. All right. 